Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all Marvel games for the GBA. With Spider-Man Mysterious Manets, the Spider-Man games on the Game Boy Advance have an incredible debut. The game is comprised of 7 levels, but in these 7 levels, you will get so much action that you want to repeat those levels after you finish the game. It is challenging, but it's worth it. Also, Spidey doesn't just punch, kick, web a little and stick to stuff. But you get powers, like web bullets, that consume your web, but you can use them from time to time. Also, you get suit upgrades, like thermal, electric and armor suits, you even get the black suit. The level designs are varied and detailed, there are even hidden secrets in the levels. Spider-Man Mysterious Menace is an incredible game you have to try. Oh, and there are multiple villains in the game. Hammerhead, Big Wheel, Electro, Rhino, Scor Scorpion, and Mysterio as the final boss. X-Men Reign of Apocalypse is a standard beat-em-up, but a really fun one and with a great presentation. I like the colors used and the graphics. Also you get around 12 locations so that the content is pretty varied. You also get multiple bosses like the Blob, Cable, Magneto and Colossus. There is a boss at the end of each level, so there are 12 bosses in total. And you get 4 playable characters, Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm and Rogue. Also each character has a different superpower that gives them a unique playstyle. And you can upgrade the stats of your character. And the last levels are awesome. You get so much boost that you get satisfied with blowing through enemies with your mutant special attack. Overall, it's a pretty good game. Spider-Man the movie doesn't have much to do with the movie, but has a separate story. Along the 12 levels in the game and the classic goon fighting, you also fight as bosses the Vulture, Craven, Shocker, Scorpion and Green Goblin. The gameplay is fun though. It has a small drawback that the controls have a slight delay, but in rest it's a nice game. The controls are at least nicely mapped and you can use a side of webbing and punching and jumping, web bombs and sticky webs. The presentation is flawless, you get comic panels that tell you the story, good graphics with lots of animations, Spider-Man is detailed and so is everything in the game. So visually the game is a feast. Also the cute pow or top words that appear on screen give flavor to the game. The Invincible Iron Man is a pretty neat game. What you see in the video is all you do. But as simple as the explanation is, as good of a game it actually is. The music gets you, I like how everything is animated and the details everywhere make up for a nice game. There's not much to talk about the game, many call it repetitive, but even if it indeed is repetitive, I had fun playing it. And I recommend you play it too. Daredevil is a time game of the 2003 movie. The game is a side-scroller beat-em-up. Overall the game is the usual game of this type. But it has one major flaw. The combat. Enemies take forever to be taken down. You punch or kick them and they fall down. Then they get up. You punch them again. They fall down and get back up again. And this type of combat, not only that it makes the game feel tedious, but you don't feel like a superhero anymore, if you can't even take down small fry easily. And you absolutely need to take down each enemy, as they drop health packs and extra lives. You need those because the game doesn't have a checkpoint system. You die once, you start all over. And you have to use this poorly executed vision to find the health packs and power-ups dropped by enemies. You can hold the trigger, the game becomes this negative like stuff and you have to search for the dropped or hidden items. And it's a rather annoying task than a fun one. The Incredible Hulk for a GBA game is really as the title says, incredible. You get 33 sandbox levels filled with explosions and aggressive combat, the game even encourages you to go angry. And you get a stamina meter that fills up the more you destroy. But if you don't smash stuff, then the meter will deplete. Also Hulk has a good deal of moves right from the start and you can unlock more moves. Also mission objectives are varied. You get fighting, puzzles and survival sections, boss battles. 
the only bad part and the only bad stuff I can say about the game is that the controls feel weird till you get used to them and that the game can get you to backtrack a good deal. Oh, and the visuals are far from being the best. But overall, considering that it's a GBA game, the game is good, especially for a tie-in game. But as a standalone game, uh, it's just decent. X2 Wolverine's Revenge is again a side-scroller beat-em-up, but keep in mind that it doesn't follow the same story as the console version. It has a totally different story. And also Wolverine has different moves in this one too. The plot summarized in that you escape the facility after you get your powers and get to fight Sabretooth and others to prevent them from using the Weapon X technology to make more super soldiers. There are 12 levels in the game and plenty of different settings. It's a normal hack and slash brawler side scroller, but a good one. I recommend you this one too. Even if it's not a groundbreaking or that original in gameplay, it suits the X-Men franchise very well. Spider-Man 2 takes the previous game and improves it. First off, it's longer, having 30 levels. The combat mechanic is nicer now and you get spider upgrades like new attacks or stronger moves. The graphics and level designs are way more fun now. There are lots of big spaces you can use your newly bought spider moves. The mission objectives are varied and many of them are fun, like for example the first mission where you have to deliver pizza. Also, like in every Spider-Man game, you don't fight just one villain but multiple ones like Rhino and Lizard, a side of Doc Ock that appears in the movie. Fantastic Four is a terrible game. It's a brawler and nothing more. And the mechanics are horrible. You don't get that many moves and the combat is unsatisfying. Also it's nice that you play with all four characters at once on the screen. But they make the game in such a fashion that you would wish the opposite. If one of your computer controlled allies gets killed because it's stupid, either walking into an electrical wire or just getting killed in other stupid ways, you lose a heart. And you know how dumb the AI can be in this type of games. Overall, it's a boring, repetitive game with occasional frustrating parts. Fantastic Four Flame On is a fantastic game. The description is brief, because there's not really much to talk about the game. Basically, the game is a side-scroller beat-em-up, with boss battles added periodically. You know the drill with these games, but as simple as the game is, I had a lot of fun in it. The animations are great, the combat feels spot on, and the controls respond well. You get some great looking and satisfying special attacks, the game has a good difficulty curve, it's not too easy and not too hard. Overall, even if, the, even if it falls into a stereotype, I recommend the game. It's incredible. Ultimate Spider-Man is a good looking game. You get the usual comic book panels that tell you the story, but where it falls short is the gameplay. The spaces are too small to be able to do nice moves, and in this game you play with both Peter and Venom. While Peter has a similar gameplay to previous games, Venom sucks up soldiers to replenish his health and has stronger attacks. The bosses are moderately hard, and in rest, it's your typical fighting action side-scroller. It's not as good as the other ones, but it still is above average. X-Men The Official Game is again a side-scroller brawler, where the game formula really fits the franchise, and in this one too, it fits. The game consists of 25 levels that try to tell you the movie, as it's a tie-in game. But well, I said try, as the game brings alterations to the movie plot as you'd expect from a game. Some levels are maze-like and filled with high-tech enemies, others are large rooms occupied by one of Magneto's top lieutenants such as Sabretooth, Juggernaut, Pyro or multiple men. Also the game has multiple characters you can play with, Wolverine, Colossus, Iceman and Nightcrawler. 
you can instantly swap to a different character just by pressing the left shoulder button. Each character has a unique ability that's useful in certain situations. Wolverine can heal automatically, Colossus can push through weakened walls and floors, Iceman can attack enemies from a distance, and Nightcrawler can teleport through reinforced walls. The graphics aren't the best, but overall it's a nice game. Marvel Ultimate Alliance on the GBA is underwhelming. It's a side-scroller beat-em-up, and it looks horrible. The gameplay is okay, but still, on the aesthetic department, some more animations would have made the game look way better. The game still has some really strong points though. It has 10 characters and 6 assist characters. You can play with the assist characters, but once the gauge has filled, you can use your assist character to unleash a special attack. Other than this, it's really nice to see that each of the 10 characters has different special attacks and different moves. And the story in the game is great. The gaming community has mixed feelings about the game. Fans say that it's a fantastic game. Critics say that the game is bad. I incline towards the critic's opinion, but I can't call the game bad. But I do admit that its choppy frame rate, lack of animations and finicky collision detection made the game less enjoyable for me. Spider-Man Battle for New York takes the prize for the worst Spider-Man game on the GBA. Not only that it doesn't look that good, but the gameplay is faulty too. Hit detection is terrible, you can get hit or knocked off buildings just from standing in the proximity of a fire. The hit detection is annoying, you want to dodge something, you think you are safe, I mean nothing is touching you, Lo you look outside of danger, but still you get damage for being close to something. This makes the whole game annoying, and the visuals and level designs are bad too. I don't recommend you play this game. Spider-Man 3 is very similar in gameplay to Spider-Man 2. The only difference is that here you can switch between the red suit and the black suit as much as you want mid-level. In rest you get a new story, the, and new levels. Ghost Rider on the GBA is a fantastic brawler. You can feel the weight of the hits, and Ghost Rider has many moves he can perform. He even has an awakening mode where he sets himself completely on fire, he can use normal attacks and chain attacks, you get bike sequences and boss battles. The boss battles feel repetitive and easy, but it's good to have them, it spices things up, cause otherwise the game will be too repetitive. Overall, it's a good brawler. If you like brawling games and Ghost Rider, you might like this game. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.